guys, today's topic is when the buzzword everyone's talking about and like the topic everyone's touching on is acting as if. And it makes so much sense until we actually try to do it. So why we struggle to act as if and to step into that place, like everyone's talking about you step into that place um, where you align with the vibration of wealth. You step into the version of you that has already tapped in, is already having 10 figure months, or already having 10K months, is already having six figure years, is already booking clients, is already super successful. And we say tap into that place and start acting as if, but it's really fucking hard to actually do that. Now, why is it hard, first of all? It is hard because there is our inner child, this version of us, that is so scared of counting her chickens before it hatches, right? Like we've all done something before in our life where we've been so excited and maybe, you know, we've been thinking we're getting promotion, we've announced it and told our friends or we're thinking someone might be proposing to us or something and we've shared it with everyone. We get our hopes up for something and it doesn't happen. Or we've publicly announced it and we believed it was about to happen and then it didn't. Maybe we didn't get the job, maybe we didn't get the guy, you know, whatever it is. We are so scared of counting our chickens before they hatch. And we're so scared of ending up disappointed and humiliated, right? It's like keeping a goal to yourself um, is so much safer, it feels like sometimes, than sharing that goal with others. And that's why I think acting as if is so hard for so many people because we are terrified of ending up humiliated, disappointed, and that kind of like, I told you so, bode, right? That's like absolute, and like, we all know the phrase, don't count your chickens before they hatch. That's, that's so common. We've all heard that by our parents, our grandparents, teachers, bosses, whatever it is, we have all heard, don't count your chickens before they hatch. So when we are trying to act as if, we constantly have this messaging, this programming, which we've received since childhood that says, you can't act as if until you have it, right? You can't go and pretend and, and believe that you're going to have all this money and this abundance and the success. You can't go and believe that and just do it if you haven't tangibly got it yet. You see these people that are so scared to celebrate, even when they do get a win, you know, they do get a promotion, they do get the guy, they, you know, whatever it is, they do get the job and they're still just like, oh, you know, I'll celebrate once I start, I'll celebrate once I'm, you know, my probation period's over, I'll celebrate once we're together for 10 years, you know, whatever it is. We're so scared to end up embarrassed. You think about it, when was the first time that you remember being embarrassed? We all know. There's like ones that's sticking in your head right now. It would be a great idea when I'm talking about like when have you felt humiliated? When have you felt like you've spoken too soon? When have you really had that count your chickens before they hatch reinforced? And spend some time journaling on that I think would be a really, really good thing because those early trigger points can be really, really powerful in stopping you from sharing, being vulnerable with other people, actually going for your goals and acting as if. Because if we're trying to step into a place of we have financial abundance, we have success in our careers and we're acting as if, so we're making decisions based around abundance. You know, it might be something as simple as replacing the broken toaster that we've been using because that represents lack and we want to step into this place of abundance. So we're trying to act as if, but there's this whole like, you can't replace things until you actually have the money. You can't act as if until you actually have the clients, right? So where is that subconscious messaging coming through? And then I just want you to identify and aware, be aware of the fact that that is your inner child trying to protect herself. If you're struggling to act as if, it's because this little six-year-old, seven-year-old, 10-year-old, 15-year-old version of you is so terrified of being humiliated. And it's like, are you going to let seven-year-old you stop you now from being successful because she's afraid of being a little bit embarrassed guys if you want to see how much fun being embarrassed can be you need to go and follow Kirsten Bell Kristen Bell and her husband what's her name Dax Jax something like that um okay for all the mums out there the one who plays Anna from Frozen <laughs> and does the voice or if you like me the one from Bad Mums 
her and her husband have the most amazing relationship and they have so much fun in life because they are not afraid of embarrassment. In fact, they thrive off of embarrassing each other, embarrassing themselves. You know how much fun it is to embarrass yourself? It's actually like once you get rid of the stigma that that's something you should feel bad about, it's hilarious. Like make fun of yourself and enjoy it. Like life gets a whole lot more fun when you're not afraid of being embarrassed, right? You know, I, I'm at that point now. I'm like pregnant and uncomfortable but I've slipped over sometimes my balance just isn't there and I've fallen on my ass out the front of my daughter's kindy completely humiliated myself and you just gotta laugh about it right once embarrassment is not embarrassing you're okay to make mistakes you're okay to fail I was at one point um being like in talks with a casting director about being on a tv show um, here in Australia and it was really exciting and I kind of like shared to everyone I'm like oh my god guys I manifested a TV experience and when it came down to it as we were in further talks I realized this TV show was actually horrific and did not align with me and did not represent my values and my family at all and I actually didn't want to be a part of it um, and there was kind of like that moment of I told everyone I'm gonna be on TV and now I'm not uh, did I count my chickens before they hatched fuck it life lesson challenge accepted yes I'm not being on that show thank god right are you gonna let the memory the the embarrassment trauma that you experience as a young child stop you from stepping into a fully successful woman now like see, let's get real what is really holding you back from acting as if let's just be honest with ourselves so then you can fully step up. You can fully start acting as if. You can fully start eliminating that lack mindset in not only just the money area of your life, but in every area of life, you can step away from that lack and scarcity and fully step into abundance because you don't have to worry about hurting your inner child. Once you can actually like acknowledge and go, oh my God, that's where that's coming from. That's not true. <laughs> like, yeah, that happened when I was little, but like, I'm not going to let that hold on to me now. Once you can do that, um, and you know, maybe you want to do some meditating, maybe you want to do some journaling on that to move through it, cut the cord with that feeling and that experience and move forward with a clean slate, move forward fresh to start a new and step in to that level of you right now that is completely aligned with abundance and wealth. She says, yes, she makes Aligned decisions knowing that there is no scarcity and there is no lack. There is only unlimited abundance for her. And that is our little training for today. Let me know your thoughts on this in the Sexy Selfish Elite. And I'm excited to hear what comes up for you in your embarrassing stories. If you feel like sharing, you are absolutely more than welcome to jump online and share with us. And I shared my, actually my most embarrassing childhood memory is when I had a bit of an upset stomach when I was about 11. We were at a party and I walked home back to our house because I had an upset stomach and I came back and I said to my dad, he's like, where'd you go? And I said, please don't say anything, but I've just had a bit of an upset tummy. So I went home and he just like told everyone. And I was like, no, I'm really embarrassed, but also you don't know how to fucking keep a secret. But it was probably a couple of bottles of red wine, red wine <laughs> inhibiting that decision. But that's probably the most embarrassing moment that I can remember. In high school, I was up on stage about to perform in front of a thousand people, students and staff. I played the violin for 13 years. I was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the option was there to go to university and go professional with it. And I said no, and I haven't touched it in about 12 years. <laughs> But I used to play the violin. I got up on stage to perform and my E string, something happened with the humidity in the air or the air conditioning or something and what the tuning peg on it went completely like... Basically, I started playing. It was awful, awful. I sounded like, a, you know, a kid who gets an instrument for the first time. Um, and so I was standing on stage like, what the fuck happened? So I stopped, tried tuning it. It wouldn't work. And so I just went up to the microphone and went... Sorry, everyone. Um, my E string just broke and I just did a curtsy and left. And my now husband, who back then wasn't my husband, was in the front row and he just cacked himself laughing and his friend yelled out, her G string broke. And that was probably one of the most hilarious and yet embarrassing moments 
of my life. So if you feel like sharing the embarrassing moments that come up for you <laughs> in the Sexy Selfish Elite group, please do. Um, I just think it'd be really fun to work through that together and just clear some of those blocks. <laughs>